You probably drive, I mean, most people do, and you wonder to yourself, what's the best lens color for my driving sunglasses? Well, stick around, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Hello and welcome, I'm Eyeglass Tyler. We're gonna talk about lens selection for driving sunglasses. I'll be honest with you, driving is pretty flexible. I'm not usually too strict on my recommendations for colors when it comes to driving. That's usually the pair that people are looking at for kind of their all around. And so there really isn't a wrong answer here, but there are some things I think I can help with and give you a good starting point, a good avenue to go down and maybe answer questions you might have. So the way I'm going to address this is I'll first talk about colors. I'll talk about neutral colors. I'll talk about contrast enhancing colors. I'll talk features like transitions. Should you go with transitions? I'll talk about some other features that you might want to consider. And I'll even touch a little bit on night driving glasses. I don't want to get too deep into that. So I'll just touch on it really quickly. Uh, if by the end of this, I've done a good job and you're ready to order, don't forget about SportRx and don't forget about our See Better Guarantee. It's pretty amazing. It gives you 45 days, even in prescription to figure that out. And then if you don't like them or you have issues, you let us know and we take care of you, no matter what that means in our end. Also, we have opticians who would love to help you get it right the first time. So use us as a resource, reach out to us. We'd love to help you. All right, let's talk about this. Okay, let's start with neutral colors. Well, what would neutral colors be? We're talking grays and even gray greens, The that G15 color you may have seen it written uh, that's kind of Ray-Ban's term for this gray-green color G15. Very popular, especially in their aviators and their more popular driving glasses. It is really pretty neutral. It might have a little bit of color changing effect to it, but for the most part, I consider that to be as neutral as gray. Uh, and what you're going to get out of this is no change in your color perception. A lot of people like that because... It's, it's easy. It's an easy, safe go-to for sure. It's definitely the most popular if you are undecided, so keep that in mind. It also is the densest tint, so that means that it's going to absorb the most light transmission for the most part, and so a lot of people are just looking for a simple, straightforward lens that doesn't change their color perception that's as dark as it can get, and for that, you're going to want to go with the grays and the gray-greens. There are other things to consider when you're going to make it as dark as you possibly can. We'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Okay, now what about contrast enhancing colors? Well, before I talk about the colors specifically, why would you even consider contrast enhancement? Well, from my perspective, I like contrast enhancement. I usually recommend it for everything. It's definitely the good go-to for just about every sport application. So if you're looking at this pair for driving and perhaps for a sport, definitely consider contrast enhancement because it helps to boost color perception. You're not getting true to world color perception, but you're getting boosted color perception. So it's going to heighten the differences between colors, which makes it easier to spot and track things like potholes. It makes it easier to read the terrain. So it can definitely be of benefit for driving. It also can give you a little more versatility in light conditions because some of these can be better for variable or cloudy or rainy conditions. So do keep that in mind if that's something else that you're considering. But the colors that you would want to look at for contrast enhancement would be your browns, your rose, your rose coppers, your ambers, uh, even some of the lighter tints like amber and yellow. Uh, those are going to help to boost that contrast and color perception uh, and can be a really good option for you. If you are looking for something that lets more light through, then you can look at some of those lighter roses, rose coppers and ambers and yellows. Uh, brown is a good color for denser tints that will still give you that contrast enhancement. Uh, so if you want something that blocks a lot of light, but still boosts contrast, then brown is a good one. And we do have some dark rose coppers as well. So definitely ask us about that. Again, we have opticians who'd love to help you. What about some other considerations? How about specifically transitions? Well, this is a question that comes up a lot. Transitions are great in terms of versatility. They can be a good option for a, you know, a secondary pair that you want to have a little more versatility with. Not usually my first recommendation for driving, and here's why. The majority of the transitions lenses, because there are there's not just one transitions lens. By the way, if you're not familiar with what that means, uh, transitions is a brand name for the photochromic lens technology. That means that it's light changing. That means that it 
will get darker or lighter depending on light conditions or UV exposure. And that's the, the issue here that most of the transitions lenses are reacting largely to or only to UV exposure. When you're in your car, your windshield is blocking that UV light. So it's not going to change the lenses. So you're, you're going to have a lens that's clear or virtually clear when you're driving, when you're needing something that's more of a dark sunglass lens. And so in that case, transitions isn't a good option for you. There are some other transitions products that might be a little better, something like their driveware, for instance, driveware. Yeah, it's better for driving, but it isn't a lens that's going to go from a completely or even virtually clear state to a tinted state. It always has a fair degree of darkness to it. It goes from about a medium amber to a dark brown. And so that is definitely something that you could consider but not usually what people are looking for when they're looking for that transition lens because they're looking for something that goes from more of a clear, virtually clear state to a sunglass tint density state. And so just keep that in mind. We've done videos on transitions. Definitely check those out that I get a little bit more deep divey into uh, if you are interested in that. But in terms of for driving, I usually don't talk transitions too much. Now, there are some other lens features to consider. We talked about tint, but there are different versions of tints. You can actually get a kind of tint called a gradient. And if you don't know what that means, it means that it is darker on the top of the lens and lighter as your eye goes down to the bottom of the lens. And so nice, dark, dense sunglass tint up top and then clear to virtually clear down at the bottom. Mostly this is a cosmetic thing. There's not a huge functional benefit to it. There can be a little bit though, if you tend to have issues with looking out and it's bright and sunny and then you look inside your cabin at the dashboard and it's just too dark for you, that can be a nice functional benefit to this gradient tint because you're not gonna have as much tint in the bottom of the lens. And so you'll be able to see the inside of your car a little bit better. I would say that's not a complaint I get too often. So unless you know that that's an issue for you, probably, don't worry about this too much unless you like how it looks. What about polarized? This is another good feature and usually one of my recommendations for somebody looking for a really good all around pair. Cause like I said at the beginning of this, I feel like a lot of people look at their driving sunglasses also as a pair that they want to use just all around. And polarized is a really good feature for this because it's going to help to block glare and light bouncing off of other objects, especially other vehicles, windshields, the asphalt, water, if you're ever driving by water. And so there can be a lot of benefit to polarized. Uh, do keep in mind there are some downsides. Uh, you'll hear a lot about digital displays. You'll hear a lot about an issue with polarized lenses and looking at screens. For the most part, I think this isn't an issue. I used to say that it is the case that the displays have gotten more advanced and they do tend to work better with polarized, but now we're getting into some of these really fancy cars that have like head up displays and have other things that actually don't work as well with polarized. So just keep that in mind, know what you have technology wise and uh, know whether or not it works with polarized. Again, I've done a lot of videos on this as well. And we at Sporter X as a whole have done a lot of videos on polarized. So if you want more deep divey information on that, check those videos out. All right, so now the quick note on night driving lenses. There's a lot of contention around this. Uh, we are actually, we have done a video on this and I will be doing another video on it, kind of a follow-up, some repeat information, but some more deep dive information on that as well. But just a quick note, should you do a yellow tinted lens for night driving like this guy right here? Well, maybe. I will say that it is an absolute fact that if you put a tint on a lens, it's going to absorb more light transmission, which means you're not getting as much light to your eye. If you're wearing them at night, usually you want to get as much light to your eye as possible. Sometimes you might have issues like bright lights or other glare issues from lights and maybe a yellow can help you, but it is an absolute fact that you are getting less light to your eyes. And so you have to also consider the fact that you're not always going to be in situations or in settings where there's a lot of light. Sometimes you'll be on more of a back road that doesn't have as much light and that yellow tint is going to absorb some of that already limited light making it to your eyes, which I think makes them more dangerous. 
just keep that in mind. There's other stuff to talk about. Again, check out those other videos we've done. So that wraps it up for Tyler's hot tips for picking out lenses for your driving sunglasses. I hope you learned something. I hope you feel a little better equipped for picking out the right pair for yourself. Again, don't forget about Sporter X if you decide to order and don't forget about our See Better Guarantee. Also, definitely don't forget about our opticians who will help you get it right the first time. We would love to hear from you. Reach out to us. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was interesting or valuable information. If so, throw us a like because it helps us. You can find relevant videos over here. Also, we have great content on our social media outlets. I think you should check us out there too because I, I think you'll like it. You can find us at SportRx.